first time featured film director, a woman, and we know that women don't get funds as easily as men. Um, a film about a lesbian kind of like midlife crisis, also sex worker. This is probably not an easy sell. Or maybe it was, actually. Maybe people like I throwing money. I didn't sell it. I didn't sell it. Um, what I did is I did sell it. I begged my wife to um, open our bank account. And um, I said, I really feel like I need to do something um, creative after a long time of being a commercial director. And she was a business person. And you know, we had kids. And we were in the suburbs. And I kind of was going a little mad. And, and, I, s and I, I got it in my head that I could make a a film for $30,000, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, she's like, yeah, sure, go ahead and take some money and do that. And um, so um, a couple hundred thousand dollars later, um, <laughs> we decided to go and find a rich investor. Um, and all we had to do, and we had, been and we had shot, and all we had to do is show him that Gretchen scene of the good hooker coming into the, the oh yeah, and he was like, where, where do I sign? And <laughs> so I was like, so he replaced my money. And so in this case, I, I've always, you know, I've always been kind of a little weird in the, in the head in terms of being able to pitch. Um, I actually was a professional pitcher in my commercial days, and I think that the reason why I was so successful is because I was a little nuts with it. Mm. But, th but when you go to Hollywood and you pitch, it's very different. You know, they don't really like the nuts. They just want to see the the bolts. Um, and so uh, so I just self-financed, really. And then we just tried to make it for as little as possible and got grants. And it was kind of a miracle that it, w that it even happened. That's a long answer, sorry. No, it's a good answer. And having... Chapter two. <laughs> <laughs> and how about, how soon did Robin um, come on board? Robin was my first choice. Your first choice, you didn't... Yeah. Yeah, I uh, I didn't know her. I had only seen her reel, the casting director. I said that I wanted somebody who really understood um, the dynamics of, uh, who was an a amazing actor, but also understood the dynamics that I was going for. And um, I wanted her to be, I wanted her to be, be a little, I, I didn't want her to be a sympathetic character. You know, I, I think that we're, uh, we often think of women like this as some, as people who, are not very sympathetic, mm -hmm. and I didn't really want to play to sympath people's sympathies or senses of what consequences were. I just wanted her to be, you know, having a midlife crisis, like a lot of men in film, mm -hmm. and doing something about it. And um, I didn't want to see her being a criminal, et cetera, et cetera. So Robin really took to the philosophy of that, and um, and she was my first choice. And within a few weeks, she came on and. She was amazing in it, so. Yeah. And, and then Maggie coming in in that secondary role, which I think really just helps. You needed someone in that role that was going to match Abby's character and was going to push that character, and you just get that sense then that Abby's just been thrown off, off kilter a little bit. Well, well Maggie Sif is, um, is quite an interesting... I don't know if you guys watch Sons of Anarchy over here. Do you do that? Okay, great. Um, one... <laughs> I watch <laughs> it. Woo! Um, Maggie is an ardent, like, uh, feminist. She is going to be in Elizabeth Subrin's next film, and she she is um, she was you know trained at NYU, and she 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 she'd played a, a hooker in a play in a stage play, and and um, I remember calling her, and she was a friend of Robin's, and they knew each other from Sons of Anarchy, and and I said, Maggie, um, I need the cheese and the burger you're going to be the cheese in the burger. <laughs> and she's like, I've never been called that, w any <laughs> you know, cheese in the burger before. I'm on. I'm going to be the cheese in the burger. And it was kind of like the fly <laughs> in the oven. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> but she, but she, she, I said, you're, the, you're, you're actually this really uh, well, um, you know, you, you really, ha you have all of the answers. You know, you have, you're, you know, you, you're, you've managed to have this open relationship with this man who's a master of the universe and you are just fine with it, and you're passionate about him, and yet you have this open relationship, and you're basically, everything's great. Mm. And she was so on with that, and she, she, she felt that it was nice that those roles were sort of reversed between the gay character yeah. and, the, and the straight character, you know. <laughs> what we see as ga being gay is freedom, mm. and being straight is caged. Yeah. 
Um, and just one final question before I open it all up to you. Um, did you ever kind of reconsider the ending or anything? Because why I you didn't like it? No, I love the ending. <laughs> I love the ending. <laughs> but I just what did you want to see? No. <laughs> um, I mean, was that always because it's just quite honest, I guess. I mean, you, I, I guess a film going out for distribution and everything, you kind of like it needs the happy ending. It needs, you know, it has a happy. It ending. does have a happy, but. Um, for me, the ending was, um, um, and, and, I, and I see this trend happening a lot in cinema or in, in film, or just in movies in general, um, where the open-ended ending is because life goes on after that. There is no, there's four possible endings mm. to this. She stays a hooker, she doesn't stay a hooker, she uh, gets divorced, she doesn't get divorced. So if I put a for sale sign in front of the yard, what does that do, you know? Um, the, the idea is implicit in the idea of this, and it, it really, for me, ends five, ten minutes before the mm -hmm. film ends, when they ask each other the question, yeah. really. Yeah. You know, I belong to only you, but you don't want me. And that begins a dialogue. And implicit after that is some sort of arrangement between them that we don't need to understand or know. But we know when she's on that bike at the end that she's got it. And when her friend asks her what she wants, she doesn't need to fetch about it anymore. She, you know, an old Yiddish word. She doesn't need to um, complain, you know, or beg, or cry. She's got it, whatever it is. And I think seeing yourself as the subject of your life is the most important thing in that scenario. I. I I checked to make sure that there were there was such a thing, <laughs> and my, most of my research came from many many books that I had on my shelf that I hadn't read um, for twenty years, and they were books by feminists that um, felt that prostitution is something that is not. Um, a punishable thing if it is if it if it is you know on her in on her terms her body you know and so I wasn't trying to tell the story about sex work although I believe in sex workers rights and you know and all of that that stuff I wanted to make it as ridiculous as Abby wanted it because I felt it was important that she ha do it on her time and on her terms and um, so that's the extent of the research. But I did read many books. They just weren't, you know, on lesbian sex work. I felt that uh, her concussion um, was the inciting incident. As I inciting incident, it was sort of a fake inciting incident, but it was really a metaphor for what a midlife crisis felt like to me. Um, I was able, I was, um, when I had, it was really a self-referential title, which I think sounds a little snobby, but when I did get hit in the head with a ball, um, this whole thing came out of me, and, um, and it was, it was, it, you know, it was really my concussion. I've gotten a lot of phone numbers. Um, well, you know, it's interesting because when they come to see it and, they and, and then they come up to me, it's, it's all been very, 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 very positive. Um, one woman at Outfest cried and I had to take her to the bathroom, um, but I didn't pay her. Um, and, um, and, and then the rest, you know, so there have been some people who've written articles in a negative light about, you know, how, you know, that I didn't do any research, you know, but I, I just, you know, prostitution is very interesting. It's like, it's like, it's like doing a movie on drugs or violence. You know what I mean? It's a very large ship to steer. You know, and so, um, you know, uh, it, this exists outside of that in a way. You know, um, it's not about child prostitution. It's not about you know, uh, you know, um, making um, you know. It's it's not about the negative aspects or all the terrible things about prostitution. It's really just this story. Um, I think.
think a lot of women don't want anyone. Um, I, mean I think that's well established, you know? Um, we see it a lot in heterosexual marriage, for sure, right? Get off of me. I don't want it. I think that biologically, some women just don't want it anymore. And uh, what? And I guess this this is this answers that you know poses that question. What if one person really, really wants it? And it's interesting. A lot of men have really loved this film because it sort of shows, sort of vindicates a lot. You know what happens with when one person in the marriage has has these very animal tendencies and the other one has nothing. What do you do then? You know. Um, so I don't know why, but it happens. Um, it happens more often than I would, you know, among my friends, you know. It, I've seen many of my friends divorce because of it, let's just put it that way. So it was just something that I saw happening, and um, so it happened. Um, you know, I... I I've been asked that question too. I think it's really an amalgam. And I think that um, this is being filmed, so I don't want to implicate anyone. <laughs> <laughs> but what I will say is that um, it's very devastating, you know, whether it's your aunt or your mom or your best friend or your daughter. It's very devastating. It hurts the marriage to not be wanted. Um, and what I thought was interesting as a lesbian is, you know, you, you, you want all of, it, 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 it was an interesting moment in time to make this film because it's, it's, it's a time where our, our sexual freedom more and more and more is accepted. And, you know, you go into it because you want sexual freedom. And yet, what happens after 20 years? Um, so... Um, it can it can it can make many 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 women and men have gone mad from not being wanted in their own relationships. And so I think it was important. Because it um I I kind of saw Kate and Abby in many ways as pioneers. I live in that um I live I felt that way. That was a very personal sign. I was the only, when I moved to the suburbs with my, my partner of 20 years, um, I, um, I felt very revolutionary road and I felt surrounded completely by hetero, not only heterosexuals, but heteronormative culture. And almost in a um, Stepford Wives type of way. And I mean, there were, there were times where I was like, this is, Horrible. Get me out of here. I can't believe that we're bringing our kids up in this. And I, I don't know that I gave it time because now I know so many more gay people and I know so many more just looser people. Um, but, 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 but for the first couple of years, and that's, I, I was very, I was like, what did we do? This is not good. And um, and and looks from people and and judgments and kind of feeling like that, you know. I I I, I you know kind of feeling like that the only one, you know. And um, we thought we would sort of change from within, as many gay people do. You know, we'll change the culture. We'll we'll be pioneers in this way. <laughs> and um, and the culture starts to change you. And so in this case, the culture changed Abby. You know, and she's very upset with it, so. Um, we did, a, we, ha we had, a, uh, my I have a producer, um, her name is Rose Troche. I don't know if you know um, Rose, she did Go Fish. <laughs> and so what I will say is it was, it, it was by design. And I, I know that sounds like a really easy answer, um, but, um, I have a very, very, very close friend. Her name is, um, uh, uh, I won't tell her your name. She's a very famous actor. She's a, 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 an actress of color. And I, and I talked to her about it. I said, uh, w <coughs> really worried about um, 
the fact that um, you know the cast isn't diverse. And she said, this is what this film is. So that's number one. Now, the butch femme thing. Can Okay, it was my first film, so it's mea culpa on my part. But I was trying to get, and I won't name their names either, um, some very butch um, Janes or Johns or whatever for Abby, and none of them would do it. So maybe my next one. 